Okay, so this is the notes page on partial fraction decomposition. And that sounds scary, but what, what it is is in this class, we're going to be given a rational expression. And we can turn that into two or more fractions added together. Um, that's what partial fraction decomposition is. And we're only going to be dealing with linear distinct factors. So you got to make sure the bottom is factored. And then you're going to write this as some number a over one factor plus some number b over another factor plus some number c over another factor, where these are all different factors. Okay, Remember, factors can look like this, x, x plus 1, x minus 2, etc. Okay, so here's how you do it. So first of all, we want a left and a right hand side. So the first mistake that people make is they don't write the left and right hand side of the equation. So rewrite this, even though I know it's right there, rewrite it so you have a left side. And then on the right side, what you're going to do, this denominator has to be factored, and that's already uh, factored for us. So make sure you factor first. factor the denominator. Okay, and then what you're going to do is you're going to put a, some number a, over one of the factors x plus another number b over the other factor x plus 2. And if there were a third factor, you'd put plus c over that factor. So we have this equation. All right, step two, after you factor and write the equation, um, you're going to multiply both sides of the equation by the LCD. So we've done this before when we um, solved rational equations. So the LCD is, is just going to be x times x plus 2. So we're going to multiply both sides by x times x plus 2. And so instead of writing this beside each of these, I'll just show you what happens. Well, these cancel. So this leaves me with x minus 8. And if I distribute this x times x plus 2 to this one, what's going to happen is this x will cancel out with that x. Okay, so if you need to see it, you can write it here. And that x cancels. You're left with a times x plus 2. And then if you distribute this one this x times x plus 2 to this term, the x plus 2's will cancel and you're left with bx. And so you're left with this equation. See that left side? You need it. And you're going to keep using that equation. So I like to put a box around that. After I legally get rid of the denominator, I'm going to just put a box around that because now we get very clever with what we're going to do. Our job is to find a and B. So you're going to pick values of X and solve for A and B. And the values of X that you can pick are endless. You can pick whatever you want. So I'm going to let X equal the zeros. All right. So we're going to let X equal the zeros. So the 0 that comes from x plus 2 factor is negative 2. So I'm going to let x equal negative 2. And we'll see why that's so important to do. So I'm going to put negative 2 into x on the left side minus 8. So you can see why you need that left side. And then I'm going to put negative 2 in for x on the right side. And because I picked negative 2, what happens is negative 2 plus 2 is 0, and this a term goes away, and now I can solve for b. So if I divide by negative 2, b is equal to 5. All right, now I need to do the same thing and find a, so I'm going to get the 0 from that factor, which is 0, so I'm going to let x equal 0. I'm going to go look right here, and I'll put 0 minus 8 on the left and a times 0 plus 2 plus b times 0. And because I picked a 0, this b goes away. And I have negative 8 is equal to 2 times a. And divide by 2, a is equal to negative 4. 
So I found out what A and B are. Now, don't forget the last step, rewrite the rational expression. So you just go back to this beginning where you said, okay, A is over X. So this equals negative 4 over X, because A was negative 4, plus B over X plus 2. Well, B is 5. And that's your final answer. So the final answer is this. I put it in the blank. That's called partial fraction decomposition. We took one rational expression and now we've pulled it apart so that it's two rational expressions. All right, let's try again uh, number two. Again, I kind of wish this was not factor. You have to factor this first, the denominator, not the numerator, but the denominator. And then you're going to create a rational equation. So don't forget to write down the left side. And then a over one of the factors, x plus 5, plus b over the other factor, x minus 3. And you want to get rid of the fraction of the denominators by multiplying through by the LCD. So I'll do it this way this time. You're going to multiply this side by x plus 3, x plus 5, x minus 3. You're going to multiply this term by x plus 5, x minus 3. And you're going to multiply this term by x plus 5 x minus 3. So you basically distributed this side got multiplied by x plus 5 x minus 3 but I distributed it. So now I can actually cross cancel everything and you can see you end up with 7x minus 1 equals the x plus 5's canceled a times x minus 3 plus the x minus 3's cancel b times x plus 5 and put a box around it because this is the equation that you're going to keep coming back to as you let x equal the zeros. So now I'm going to let x equal this x minus 3 gives you a 0 of 3. So I'm going to put 3 in to the left side and 3 in for x on the right side. And that gives you 21 minus 1, so that's 20. 3 minus 3 is 0, so 0 times a is gone. And 3 plus 5 is 8, so I have 8b. Okay, so if I divide by 8, you want to leave this improper. I'll show you how to handle this. And let's reduce it. 4 goes into 25 times. 4 goes into 8 twice. Okay, so b is 5 halves. All right. Now we're going to let x equal the other 0, which is negative 5. So that would be 7 times negative 5 minus 1 equals a times negative 5 minus 3 plus b times negative 5 plus 5. That's negative 35 minus 1. That's negative 36 equals, that's negative 8a. That's 0 times b, which is 0. Divide by negative 8. And a gives you 36 over 8, which reduces. You don't really know what that reduces to. You can just use your calculator and hit the squiggle. You want the improper fraction. You don't want the decimal. You want the improper fraction. You don't want the decimal. OK. So this is an important one to know what to do when you have these fractional values. Okay, so I'm going to do it the long way, all right, and uh, then I'll explain. So what you want to do is you want to go back to this template here, and a is over x plus 5. So I'm going to write 9 over 2 over x plus 5 plus b, which is 5 over 2 x minus 3. Okay, we are not done yet. That is illegal to leave it that way. You cannot have an, a complex fraction. You can't have a fraction in a fraction. So how would you get rid of that complex fraction? Well, you can multiply by a convenient form of 1. So if I multiply, if I want to get rid of this 2 up here, if I multiply this top by 2, that's going to cancel out that 2 in the denominator. 2 without a, you can make anything a fraction. So if it's just 2, 2 is in the denominator. So that's going to cancel out that 2, but I can't just multiply the top by 2. I have to multiply by 2 over 2, 
which is legal. And over here, same thing. I'm going to multiply by 2 over 2. That's completely legal. You can multiply by 1 all you want. But see what happens is this 2, like I said, cancels with that 2, and you're left with 9 over 2 times x plus 5. Over here, this 2 cancels with that 2, and you're left with 5 over 2 times x minus 3. So that is your final answer. Now, I showed you why that works, but now I'll tell you what you can do. If a is 9 over 2, you can go ahead and put the 9 in the numerator and the 2 down in the numerator with, the, with, with that factor. That will work every time. If b is 5 halves, you can go ahead and put the 5 in the numerator and the 2 in the denominator. That will work every time. But you can't leave it that way. Okay, on the back we have uh, x plus 2 over x squared minus x minus 2 and we want to write the partial fraction decomposition of this and so you have to make sure you remember you must factor that denominator first. When in doubt, factor. So the factors of 20 that subtract to be 1 or 5 and 4 so negative 1 would mean x minus 5 x plus 4. So it's factored and now we're going to write the form and it's going to be some number a over x minus 5 plus some number b over x plus 4. Okay, now we're going to multiply by the LCD, which is always this bottom. So multiply this by x minus 5, x plus 4. Multiply this by x minus 5, x plus 4. Multiply this by x minus 5, x plus 4. You're multiplying both sides by that LCD, but I just distributed that and I wrote it twice so I can cancel and left with x plus 2. The x minus 5 cancels, you're left with a times x plus 4. The x plus 4's cancel, you're left with b times x minus 5. And I like to put a box around this so I because I'm going to keep referring to it. This is where I'm going to substitute in. All right. Okay, so we want to let x equal the 0 from x plus 4 would be negative 4, and you're going to plug negative 4 everywhere you see x. That gives you negative 2 equals 0 times a is gone, negative 9b, divide by negative 9, and b is 2 ninths. Now we'll go find a by letting x equal the other 0 that comes from this factor. Let's let x equal 5. Put 5 everywhere. And you have 7 equals 9a plus 0. So divide by 9, and a is 7 ninths. All right, so I told you why in the last example, but now I'm just going to do it. a is 7 ninths. So the factor x minus 5 goes with 7 ninths, but I'm not going to put 7 ninths. I'm going to put the 9 down there with the factor x minus 5 b is 2 ninths over x plus 4, but I know that's going to simplify to 2 over 9 times x plus 4. Alright, the last one you might want to try by yourself. It's already been factored. Pause the video and see if you can do it. Okay, so I'm going to rewrite the left side. And then a over 1 factor, so a over x plus 2 plus b over x minus 3. I'm going to multiply both sides by x plus 2, x minus 3. x plus 2, x minus 3. x plus 2, x minus 3. Cancel, cancel. 2x plus 1 equals the x plus 2 cancels and you have a times x minus 3. The x minus 3 cancels and you have b times x plus 2. So now we have a nice equation without fractions that we can substitute into. And then we're going to let x be the 0. So let's let x be 3 and you substitute 3 in for x. That gives you 7 equals 5b. 
So B is 7 fifths. Let's let X equal the other 0, negative 2. So that would be 2 times negative 2 plus 1 equals A times negative 2 minus 3 plus B times negative 2 plus 2. Negative 4 plus 1 is negative 3 equals negative 5a. Uh, you'd be surprised how many times people just make arithmetic errors, so don't be afraid to use the calculator on a test just to make sure you don't make a silly mistake. All right, we're going to divide by negative 5, and a is 3 fifths, not 0.6. You're not allowed to use decimals. All right, so a goes with the factor x plus 2, so that's going to be 3 over 5x plus 2 plus b 7 over 5x minus 3. So that's the partial fraction decomposition for that one. So that's partial fraction decomposition.